Let Earth Clues, Part 9, The Magic Show. This is part of a series of clues that can help you get your head around both the design of the flat earth system we live in and who has been involved in the deception to hide it from you. This flat earth perspective initially started out as a problem solving exercise that was going to be built into clue 7, otherwise known as the long haul. But after some research and a little patience, it has evolved into something that warranted its own section and is a perfect example of good things come to those who wait. So emails and phone calls have been coming in, almost all of them positive. Several people from around the world commented on the southern plain routes. They said that while 95 percent of the long routes in that hemisphere were connections, which in itself raises red flags, there were a few pesky non-stops that seemed to contradict the overall logic. The question then posed to me was, obviously, are they real flights? Could they be put there to throw the Flat Earth group off? If it was a trick, could I figure out what it was and how it was accomplished? I accepted the challenge and started my impression of Morgan Freeman as he went up against the Four Horsemen magician crew. Now, admittedly, I was skeptical to start, because the flights went against the third rule, that being the flat earth has no shortcuts. Only a globe has shortcuts. As in magic, I had to assume the rule was not being broken, but only hidden, or having the illusion of being broken. But first, I had to see the trick itself. I had to see the planes in question, and see them make the route. Anyone can list a flight, but does it actually go from point A to point B? With the help of several other people, this was then put to the test. While just about everyone with a cell phone knows about GPS and how it can track things, many people don't know that even though it's a system built by the military, there is a very public aspect to it. So while your phone is tracked at all times, so are other things, most notably all air traffic. Now, if you're military, you could view military planes. If you work at a cargo carrier like UPS or FedEx, you can view transport planes. The general public is mostly limited to commercial air traffic. This can be viewed in several places, and the one I chose was planefinder.net. You can use others like Flight Aware, Flight Radar 24, Flight Tracker. It makes no difference because they are all tied into the same exact GPS system. All these sites do basically the same thing. Track every commercial plane in the world from start to end in real time. So I spend day after day looking at the Plane Finder global map, which you see here. At any given time, it's tracking between three to 7,000 flights that are en route anywhere in the world. You'll notice two different colors for planes, red and yellow. Yellow just means there's a five minute delay in processing and only applies to the United States. The point here is in order to prove out these flights that go against flat earth theory, I need to watch a few as they cross either the South Pacific or Indian Oceans. The web page updates automatically, but just to be sure, I close and reopen the page every 30 minutes or so and wait for an ocean plane. And I wait. And I wait. And I wait some more. Hours pass. Days pass. And no red planes to entertain me. And somewhere in this process of me just staring at these empty oceans, waiting for a plane to cross, something occurs to me. Can you guess what it is? Nothing is crossing these oceans. Not non-stops, connections, multiple connections, nothing. But that's not possible, right? The planes have to reach their destinations. So I change gears and just watch the coastlines of anything in the southern hemisphere. And I start to see it. I follow a simple plane out of Brazil on its way to South Africa, which, by the way, is not part of the long-haul argument. 
It's offshore just a few hundred miles. I get something to drink, and when I come back, it's gone. Hmm. Just a glitch, right? So I follow another, and another, and the same thing happens again and again. Once the plane reaches an imaginary line in the water, GPS makes it disappear. Then a friend who is also working on this problem sends me some links, which I've included in the description. I encourage you to take a look at them. At first, they don't seem like much, just an average flight log showing speed, altitude, locations, things you could expect. Then you scroll down to about 3.30 in the morning, and the location drops away, and is replaced by either the word approximate or the word estimated. This then continues for the next five hours, until, miraculously, one hour before landing, the flight log reestablishes itself, and the GPS system shows the plane in real time about to reach its destination. So to be clear to those who may not be seeing everything here, the flights are being dropped off GPS, and their flight data is also turned off and stays off until they are almost on top of their arrival point. And you say, well, that's how GPS works. Well, no, because the Northern Hemisphere has planes flying all over their oceans. And then you say that maybe it's a localized Southern Hemisphere thing. And I say, then why are all the flights over or near land perfectly tracked? Furthermore, this is a U.S.-based system, with Americans flying on vacation every single day. You're telling me that those people aren't going to be tracked? In addition, the Vanishing Plane Act is happening to not only the South Pacific and Indian Oceans, which I would expect, but also the South Atlantic, which isn't part of the Flat Earth argument. There are a bunch of flights that cross this relatively small ocean between South America and Africa, and every one of the planes is hidden shortly after takeoff. So then you say, what would be the purpose of hiding those shorter routes in the Atlantic? It's because of something I didn't see right away. If you hide one flight, you have to hide them all. Showing the GPS routes in the Atlantic, but leaving out the Pacific and Indian Oceans, would raise different questions. So the logic here, despite being very sneaky, is sound. The third rule is that the Flat Earth has no shortcuts. If you look at the azimuthal equidistant map again, and look close, you notice that while the South Pacific, South Atlantic, and Indian Oceans make up the lower sections on a globe, they make up the outer ring on a flat model. In that model, there is no shortcut between Australia and South America. If you are creating flight routes, you have only two choices. You take the long way around, clockwise or counterclockwise, and stay on the ocean. Or you cut across the land in the middle. But if you cut across the land, you have to create connections, because on a globe, it wouldn't make sense to fly over the top of the United States to get to South America. Neither of these choices are ideal. So the authority came up with a compromise. Disable GPS and lose the planes for every ocean flight in the Southern Hemisphere. Then reactivate them once the destination is reached. This is just one of the lengths that they are willing to use to keep you from seeing it. Don't just hide some things. Hide everything so that maybe the topic isn't addressed. And some would come back and say, well, nice going. You just pointed out a flaw in their system, and sooner or later, they will fix the gap. Hmm, maybe. But not soon, I think. Remember, this is a rule, not a guideline. They can't change the map, so they have to work within its limitations. 
If they have a better workaround, I can't wait to see it. So do your own research and ask questions. Oh, by the way, welcome to the Flat Earth and enjoy your flight.